speaking to uh, Sevang Namgyalle mm. of the Snow Leopard Conservancy India Trust. Namgyalle, can you tell us uh, a little bit about the SLC, what its programs are? Uh, yeah, so the Snow Leopard Conservancy India Trust, uh, it's a grassroots level organization based in Ladakh. We mostly work with local communities to conserve the snow leopard and various other species that the snow leopard prey on and then also the restoration of habitats sometimes. Uh, and so in the community livelihood programs, we have uh, uh, one of our flagship programs, the Himalayan Homestay Program, which was started in the year 2000. Um, three and to complement that we have several other programs like the handicraft programs and other uh, <clears throat> you know uh, things like the uh, uh, the eco cafes for example and then the eco shower facilities in villages to uh, give tourists shower facilities because these are lacking in certain villages so to tell you more about the homestays it was started in the year 2003 uh, mostly to actually leverage the uh, growing tourism and uh, to, you know, to, uh, to conserve the snow leopard actually. And uh, uh, Ladakh, the number of tourists in Ladakh has been growing exponentially. Ladakh, when it was first opened to tourism in 1974, we had about 530 tourists visiting, and today we have uh, we get it up to 300,000 tourists in a short span of three to four months so all the income from that growing tourism were going to mostly travel agents hoteliers and restaurateurs in Lee but the people in remote villages they were not getting much to, so the <coughs> Snow Leopard Conservancy India Tra Trust wanted to change that uh, and also give some income generation opportunities to people living in remote vill villages uh, you know often suffering due to depredation by a snow leopard of, of their livestock uh, so that worked really well, uh, you know, uh, after it was started in 2003, currently we are running homestays in uh, over 40 villages, uh, benefiting some 180 uh, households directly and then villages, of course, because uh, part of the 10% uh, of the proceeds from the homestays uh, go to a village uh, common fund, a uh, conservation fund, which can be used for <coughs> various activities like uh, plantation, cleaning up trekking trails, and also as be, uh, the entire village get benefits actually when we start the homestays uh, in the village. <coughs> so, uh, so yes, I mean, that uh, it has been really good, in, as I said, uh, to distribute the income a little bit more equitably and also reduce pressure on the range lanes. You know, earlier when pe people were trekking in the mountains, uh, they used to, trekkers often used to carry, like, you know, take a lot of horses to carry the camping gear, and these horses would, uh, you know, uh, graze in the areas, very critical wildlife habitats, <coughs> and that put a lot of pressure on the uh, uh, the uh, pasture land resources you know so now that that pressure is off also and plus it gives a very good opportunity for tourists to learn about the local culture first and you know because a lot of people come here to learn about the local culture you know get some experience uh, of the local uh, culture so there there cannot be a better way than <clears throat> you know spending time with the local people seeing you know on a day to day how they're spending day to day. So that has been very successful. In fact, it's one of the best conservation, wildlife conservation models in the Himalayas and many other organizations replic has, you know, have been replicating this across the Himalayas. Uh, and, and as I said, to complement that, we have the handicraft development going on. Then every year we train uh, villagers in you know, making souvenirs, for example, tourists come to stay in the homestays and at the, and then they are looking for something to take back as souvenir and so we have been training them <coughs> more recently in uh, uh, something called a dry needle felting um, uh, by which they make uh, so soft toys of snow leopards and wild animals you know so that has been very popular actually during winter people don't have much to do you know the agricultural fields they don't have much work there so they just uh, keep uh, indoors and then they uh, make all these uh, uh, crafts uh, and that also has been very good in uh, you know generating income for the local people so all these actually help in offsetting the livestock loss to snow leopards and has been very successful and the change in attitude of people towards the snow leopard and generally towards wildlife you know 
people before all these programs people who used to go up in the mountains killing wolf pups you know uh, revenge killing smaller but when they got inside livestock uh, pens and kill a lot of sheep and goats uh, uh, today the same people are trying to attract these animals close to the villages all the predators actually and so that's a very you know it's very heartening to see that uh, so that negative attitude is really uh, as revenge killing come down <coughs> definitely yes i mean <coughs> in all these villages uh, in the, there used to be one revenge killing every a uh, couple of years if not more so that has uh, come to a complete uh, that has come to a knot you know so nowadays they don't kill i mean so if we, they attract the snow leopards close to the villages then there's no question that they'll, they'll be killing them otherwise you know a lot of people come to see the snow leopard if there are no snow leopards then they won't uh, they won't be tourists coming and staying in their homestays so are, are the youth also showing some interest <coughs> for sure i mean the uh, the youth are taking more more and more interest uh, for sure i'll tell tell you an example uh, some uh, three years ago in a village you know there was a, uh, a snow leopard had gotten into a livestock pen and killed uh, some uh, 15 sheep and goats and uh, they had uh, informed the wildlife authorities and they had come there and uh, so there were a lot of people uh, gathered from the surrounding villages and youth and uh, elderly all of them were there and so when these guys, the wildlife authorities, caught the snow leopard and it was being uh, taken away, uh, the older people who, who, who were get, uh, gathered there, they told the, uh, the wildlife authorities to, you know, take the snow leopard as away from them as possible, while the youth, you know, some of the youth have said, you know, can you please release the snow leopard in our village if they don't want to have the snow leopard in their village, for example. So the, you can see that contrast, you know, mm. and that also short span of... So it's... Uh, uh, clearly shows that you know the youth are taking interest in this, and a lot of youth are uh, becoming nature guides. You know, and it's a very uh, nice uh, source of income, and also people coming from all over the world nowadays uh, sharing news and views. I mean, everyone is uh, happy. You know. It's yeah. the, <coughs> we are standing right now in Saspotse village. Can you tell a little bit about the you know, like the number of homestays and what's happening here? Yeah, so Saspotse village is the the was the last to, uh, one to be, you know, to to uh, have this you know, homestays on this uh, trekking route in the Sham uh, trekking route, and there are some about uh, 30 households. Out of those 30 households, we have uh, homestays. Uh, uh, nine of the, those 30 households have more homestays, and uh, they are doing uh, excellent work. It's, this is one of the best villages in and uh, when it comes to really. Uh, maintaining all the system that uh, that we have uh, created to run the homestays properly properly uh, so yeah uh, all of them are happy so as I said you know the benefit goes to, to the entire village not just the homestay owners because as I said that 10% uh, of the proceeds go towards the village conservation fund plus the other households and where whoever cannot uh, uh, you know host tourists uh, to those homestays we have uh, we train them more in the handicrafts you know so these people are uh, making the uh, you know uh, producing some uh, uh, local crafts and they are selling it through the homestays you know who, uh, whatever home I mean whichever homestays there are in the village so uh, and sometimes they also bring it to our souvenir shop in Leh so yes I mean it's been a very nice you know good experience for them Although they have been saying now that uh, we, we are getting a lot of domestic tourists uh, these days, so domestic tourists tend to, uh, you know, they, they don't go on tracks that, that much as the foreign tourists used to go. So because of that, and there are a lot of commercial uh, establishment, uh, commercial guest houses are, are also mushrooming everywhere, like, you know, to, to take benefit of that. So because of that, they have been saying that the number of tourists is declining a bit. So now we are trying to rebrand the whole thing and uh, add more value so that more and more tourists uh, come uh, to the homestays because this has a conservation linkage, you know, and that's important. Otherwise, it, when things become commercial, then it just goes out of control and it just uh, destroys the landscape and uh, the environment and everything.